Welcome to Electron Line. Now that we've finished part one in the previous video, we're now ready to do part two. We're trying to find the force required to pull the wedge out. In the previous video, we looked at the forces acting on the block. Now we're going to look at the forces acting on the wedge. Again, the force to pull the wedge out, that's what we're looking for. And we know there's going to be friction on the top surface and on the bottom surface. And there's also going to be what we call reactionary forces, which are the vector sum of the normal force, which is normal to the incline, and the, and the friction force. Now notice the friction force will be acting in this direction, the normal force acts in this direction, and R1, the reactionary force, is the vector sum of those two forces. R3, again, there will be a friction force in this direction as you're trying to pull the, the wedge out. There will be a friction force in this direction, and there will be a normal force against the surface here. So we add those two together, and you get the reactionary force. Since nothing has started moving yet, we're at the moment, the pending motion down moment. We can add the three forces together, and that should add up to zero. And this is the vector sum of those three forces. What we need to do now is find the three angles made by those three forces. Also notice that in the previous video, in part one, we already figured out the value of R1 in terms of the weight of the block, and that will allow us then to find the relative force and R3 here as well. Now, how do we find those angles? Well, first of all, since the coefficient of static friction is 0.35, we can find the angle relative to the normal of each of the reactionary forces at 19.29 degrees, which is what we find here. The norm is perpendicular, so here we can see the angle between R3 and the normal. Here we have the angle of 19.29 degrees between the reactionary force R1 and the normal, but we have to subtract the 8 degrees because it's at a slant, so the angle with the vertical is only 11.29 degrees there. So how do we find the angles? Well, here we have R9. This is the angle relative to the vertical, so to find this angle here, we can say that this angle is equal to 90 degrees minus this angle, which is 11.29 degrees, which is equal to 88.71 degree. If we add this together, oh, not 88, that would be too big. How about 78.71 degrees? So that's 89, that's exactly 90 degrees. Now, for the second angle, we can use R3. We can come up here, we can realize that this angle here is going to be 90 degrees minus the angle relative to the vertical, which is 19.29 degrees. So this becomes equal to 70.71 degrees. And finally, the third angle can be found by taking 180 degrees and subtracting these two angles from it, so minus 70.71 degree and minus 78.71 degrees. And that becomes equal to 180 minus 70.71 and minus 78.71 equals 30.58 degrees. Now we can use the law of sine to find R1 and F, or not R1, but R3 and F. What we can say is that F divided by the sine of the angle directly across, which is this angle right here, 30.58 degrees, is equal to R1 divided by the angle directly across, which is this angle, the sine of 70.71 degrees, which is equal to R3 divided by the angle directly across, which is 70, the sine of 78.71 degrees. All right, that allows us to find R3 and F. R3 is equal to R1 times the sine of 78.71 degrees divided by the sine of 70.71 degrees, which is equal to 78.71, take the sine of that, divided by 70. 0.71, take the sine of that, equals, that's equal to 1.039 R1, and of course, that is 1.039 times R1 is 0.953 times the weight, 
So times 0.953 equals, and it's equal to 0 0.99 times the weight. All right, we do the same for F, the force, which is ultimately what we're trying to find, the force required to pull the wedge out. That will be equal to R1 times the sine of 30.58 degrees divided by the sine of 70.71 degrees. So that would be 30.58, take the sine, divided by 70.71, Take the sign of that equals, that's equal to 0 0.539 times R1, which is 0 0.539 times 0 0.953 W, the weight. So it's R1 is 95.3% of the weight. And so times 0.953 equals, we have, this is equal to 0 0.513 times the weight. And so that's the force required to pull the wedge out. It's slightly more than half the weight of the block and that will allow us to slide the wedge out. If you remember right from the previous videos, it took a little bit more than the weight of the block to push the wedge in. It makes sense. And that's how we do a problem like that.